This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicke and I'm joined by Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins. Hey Dave. Hi Dave. Hello, episode 101. Ooh. Very cool. Have, you, have we all recovered from the shenanigans of the live show last weekend? No. I must admit I woke up with a sore forehead after headbutting a watermelon. <laughs> not once, not twice, but thrice. And still making absolutely no impact. Yeah, that was embarrassing. I had a really good angle and no one else in the room seemed to see this. But I saw red juice splurt out from either side. Did you? Yeah. I can't tell if you're just telling me that to make me feel better, which is really nice, by the way. No, I'm not being nice. I, I genuinely saw a squirt. Oh. And I reckon... From the from the watermelon, <laughs> not from the humping part, the headbutting no, yeah, part. Yeah, from the headbutting okay, part. Okay, good, good, good. So I it I, and I imagine it would have just been a tiny little, you know, it would have just been a little squirt out a tiny crack that you couldn't see oh. after when... when <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, my parents came around the next day and guess who had watermelon for dessert? Oh. Yeah. Did you tell them what you'd done to it? I just said it was part of a live podcast and they did not ask any questions. As we've established, you mentioned the word podcast and the conversation instantly dries up. Dries up. <laughs> Especially from your parents who don't fully understand what a podcast is. So they're like, that's not. All right, that, that's anyway. Anyway, this watermelon's pretty good. How's your real job? <laughs> yeah, yeah you'll, you'll never leave that for the podcast, will you? Right. That's just a hobby. Yeah. And I'm like, sadly, yes it is. <laughs> Oh, our dreams are know, silly. But we have a bloody great time. And at the live show, I must say, I had one of the best Saturday afternoons I've had in a long time. That was really, really fun. And so many people came out and they were so they were so warm and lovely. It was great. It was really nice. Yes, thank you to everyone for, for coming out and cheering so loudly. It made a, the 100th episode feel very special. Mm, yeah, it did. It was really nice. It was great. Got to and meet people. Yeah, that was, that was really cool hanging around and chatting to people afterwards. Mm. I met a man called Bruce. That's not real. <laughs> That's made up. Bruce. Bruce, yeah. <laughs> I'm panicking. I've misremembered his name. My name's yeah, he was Bruce. there. Maybe it was Barry. Oh, the two on, most on Aussie Aussie names. Is he the guy you were sitting with? Yes. And with his kids. So he was there with his his partner and their two two um, adult kids and the son. I can't remember everyone's name. I'm sorry. Apologise about this. He got into the the podcast first and then got his sister and then his his parents in. That's and nice. Bruce slash Barry. <laughs> I think he has Barry now. <laughs> um, he. His uh, partner was like, oh, you should listen to the the, the podcast. I'll, I'll set you up. He likes the, the American Civil War. It's mm-hmm. sort of his favorite history part of things. He's watched a few documentaries and read some books about that. <laughs> yeah. And so he wanted to start with the Abraham Lincoln episode, Matt. Good episode. Where Abraham Lincoln was, uh, was sh- shot. What? Sh- sorry to say that. Spoiler. By Lee. Not Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> That's JFK, supposedly. <laughs> John Wilkes Booth. And so he was like, oh, great, I'll start with that. So he went for, he goes for a run with his dog and he was running with the dog listening yeah. to the episode and he's listening to the episode and we do our ramble at the start, this part of the episode. And he's like, just get to the podcast, which I imagine a few people are saying right now. But anyway, just <laughs> let me finish this. <laughs> and uh, we started talking and we started talking a lot about horses and he was like, oh, this is, this is a bit strange, but uh, he knows a lot about John Wilkes Booth and he knew that John Wilkes Booth escaped Ford's Theatre on a horse. Right. And he was like, it must be that bit. We continued to talk about horses and it was only when he was halfway through his jog, you know, halfway, you know, a long way from his house, he realised that we were in fact talking about the uh, My Little Ponies. <laughs> <laughs> his partner, had, uh, his wife had put on the wrong episode for him and he had to listen to that. His introduction to the podcast was us talking about My Little Ponies for an hour. Which was a very popular episode, but probably not a, uh, his Probably his not slash Bruce slash Barry. At yeah. what point did he realise that, uh, that the murderer didn't get away on a flying unicorn <laughs> named uh, My Little Sparkles? or what? No, Princess Sparkles? No, fuck. Sparkle Sunshine. It's my little... Sp- no, Princess Sparkles. I reckon that is right. But he did learn a lot from the, the episode and he he now knows what a cutie mark is. That's he right. He would not have known what that was otherwise. So there you go. <laughs> and they still came to the show and I appreciate that coming as a family unit. That's nice, isn't, isn't it? Isn't nice? Because when you, when you grow up, you know, when you're adults, you don't do as much as a family, you know? Just the fam. That's nice. Mm. That That's is nice. nice. It you is know, it's always nice. dinners for a special occasion, but why does it have to be a special occasion? Let's just hang out. That's nice. That is nice. Do you know what I mean? That's nice. I think so. I I miss my parents. 
And here they are now. <laughs> Ian and John have been hiding in that corner all along. Anyway, let's do a report. Yeah. Let's do a report. So, let me give you the 101 on how this show works on episode 101. Wow. Thank you so much for doing that. thought about that in the toilet earlier. In the John. <laughs> in the John. I was it, in the John and is, I thought, 101. Is that a saying? Give you the 101? Yeah, the 101. 411. Yeah, it's the 411, isn't it? No, yeah. the what? Welcome to Maths 101. Yeah, oh, okay. but you yeah. Like, say, what's going on? What's the 411? It's not 101. Well, you can have your time to shine in 310 episodes. Let me have this Here's time. Here's Podcast 101. Yeah, that would have. that's what you should have done. Do go on 101. Oh, that's fun. Let's drink some 101 proof pod. That's, that's uh, how Americans uh, nah. talk about alcohol. No. Nope. Yeah, proof. They love that, don't they? You wrecked oh, it. Proof. Stop. Anyway, what we do on this episode, on this, on this episode, and on this show, is uh, pick a topic, often listeners suggested, nearly all the time these days, and uh, one of us uh, researches and reports back to the other two, and it is Matt's turn to do such a thing. And we always start with a question. Did you say that? No, and we always start with a question. And here is the question. Hang on, but now you both got to say that. I want to say it. (laughs) And we always start with a question. Just as right, Dave. We always do. (laughs) Sorry, I forgot that bit. The question this week is, which single event led to the largest loss of American civilian life in the 20th century? Single event. So like a speed dating night? Yes. And an over 28th mixer? Yeah. Hmm. So single events. You wouldn't count World War One or Two. No. And it's also civilian life. Civilian life. Okay. So and 20th century. So it wouldn't be the 9-11 attacks then? Exactly. Okay. It actually, the 9-11 attacks, it, it was holding that sort of uh, morbid record until 9-11. Oh. Right. Is it also a morbid event? Yes. Well, I mean, uh, civilians are dying. Oh, okay. That means that our listeners are going to enjoy it. Well, um, but it Matt will struggle to make it funny. Is it a natural <laughs> disaster or a man-made disaster? Man-made. Oh. Oh. Um, Is it a bombing of some description? No. It might be obvious once we know it, but right now I can't think of anything. Even like Joe can't. Is it that anything. time the tiger got out of the Central it's got Park mass- Zoo? It's got massacre in the name. Is it a shooting? No. Okay, oh, it was not a bombing, not a shooting, so that's looking less morbid. No. But the word massacre is really putting me off here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you guys might just not have heard of this potentially. It's called the Jonestown Massacre. Oh, oh. oh shit, you're doing Jonestown. Whoa, okay. <laughs> really cool. Whoa. I've definitely heard of this. I've put it in my Patreon vote before and it came second. So. Right. But people wanted it. People were commenting. Well, it, it's come in directly through the golden hat from uh, a Patreon listener called Stephen Summo. Oh, uh, Stephen. Great choice. This is fascinating. Sounds like you are going to know more about it than me, though, which not, is cool. Maybe not more, but I'll remember bits and pieces as you as you go. It's uh, it's fascinating and so fucked, so our listeners are going to love it. Dave, and you, do you know much about it? Mm, not much. May I have breezed the Wikipedia article maybe once or twice, but I've never seen a doco or anything like that, so I'm very interested to hear all the nitty-gritty details. Awesome. Uh, sure. Well, I'm, uh, it was a, Jonestown was a settlement established by the People's Temple of Disciples of Christ, a religious movement founded by a man named Jim Jones that combined elements of Christianity and socialism, and it was in northwestern Guyana. Is that how you'd say that? That is absolutely right. Great. Cool. Anyway, so I'm going to go back and talk about Jim Jones, the, the man. Oh, Jim Jones. Jim Jones. Oh, a man that had such an average name that he had to make a mark somehow. <laughs> His full name was, yeah, it's, it is a very average sort of name. Rock solid. Uh, James Warren Jones. Oh, Warren. Wazza. Jimmy Wazza. No good. Was born on the 13th of May, 1931 in, in Indiana. His parents were James Jones, a World War I vet. Not veteran. <laughs> made it sound like he was in He was looking after dogs. He's looking after all those pigeons who won the VC for <laughs> animals. I, th- I think from what I, I could figure, he, he was injured over there and he came back sort of, uh, he didn't work when he came back. And then his mum was Lynetta Putnam, who worked in a few different jobs. Oh, she's making up for the terrible names of her husband Lynetta. and son. Apparently, um, I've, I've gone through a bit of, Wikipedia has been one of the main sources for this episode, so, you know, asterisk. But uh, apparently... Um, L- uh, Lynetta Apparently, uh, my dick is big. 
You know when people just add the, like little sentences <laughs> like that in Wikipedia? Uh, uh, Jim Jones was born in My Dick is Big, <laughs> Indiana, 1931. <laughs> <laughs> that was the next sentence um, Sorry, sorry uh, But yeah, Lynetta, uh, his mum, reportedly believed she had given birth to the Messiah Okay, well we all think our kids are the best but oh, that's going So many far. people act that way though, don't they? Yeah, um, my son is the Messiah uh, Yeah, when you're at, at the supermarket and someone's fucking up And you're like, why can't they tell him off? They just turn to you and go, he's the Messiah He's the Messiah <laughs> I can't yell at him and he has to go first on the slide at the playground <laughs> <laughs> Move aside. I'm always I, all these things when something something wild like this happens. I always wonder about like this history wasn't written down. This was all written afterwards, right? Mm. So people go back, and I I'm always a bit dubious on that. Yeah, sort people of stuff. go back and they add about a note about how big their dick is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've at the time people weren't writing it down about how big their dick is. Yeah, it's only only after the fact. Yeah, you look back in rose colored glasses at the size of your genitals. Yeah. And you write it down. <laughs> Big wiki fan over here. All right, mate. He's big, that's basically how this show was big born. Big wiki fan. Hey? <laughs> yeah, my obsession. Uh, with jo- your own genitals? No, with wiki. Oh. <laughs> Dickypedia. <laughs> Jones was born into the Great Depression. Times were tough, and the shack he was brought up in didn't have Oh, well, I mean, you say plumbing. shack. Yeah, well... You gave that away with Shaq. <laughs> was he born in the stable on Christmas Day? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I think. Uh, I think another another guy was born in a in a shack without with plumbing. No plumbing. <laughs> Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> tough childhood. Really tough. <laughs> Jones found it hard to make friends as a child, but he was a strong student and a big reader. He, he read extensively about controversial leaders such as Karl Marx, Joseph Stalin, Mahatma Gandhi. Mao Zedong and Adolf Hitler. Mao Zedong's still funny. It's still funny. It'll never not be funny. <laughs> Mao Zedong. What the fuck? <laughs> what were you thinking, Mao Zedong's parents? <laughs> uh, if, you, if your surname's Dong. <laughs> you can't win anyway, but don't make it something like Mousy. Zedong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the idea that his, his name is Dong. Anyway... <laughs> Mousy. His first name is Mousy, <laughs> and his surname funny. is Dong. Dong. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. What would you call it? Like, his nickname at school would be Donga. Donga. <laughs> I don't know if that's how it worked in China. Nah, I'm pretty sure. Oi, Donga. Dave, we're not so different. Donga, can I borrow a buck? <laughs> Need a sausage roll. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so we're right back there with him. Um... So Jones also became interested in religion at a pretty young age. A neighbour started taking him to church and around the age of... Hang on. Mum thinks he's the Messiah, but the neighbour has to take him to church. Yeah, I guess why would the mum... <laughs> She's it's, busy. Wh- I mean, why would you take the Messiah to church? Mm. He knows everything. Yeah, that feels like a waste of everyone's time. Unless yeah. you're putting him up on the stage, yeah. on the altar. The stage. the stage. God, you're such a performer. Real showbiz. <laughs> the open mic night at the church. <laughs> Guys, uh, we've actually got a special guest dropping in tonight. I mean, it, it's it's the Messiah. He's seven years old. <laughs> Doing a drop in. Jim, He's just gonna do five. Jim, get up here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, anyway, yeah, the neighbours started taking him to church. But around the age of ten, he started visiting multiple churches in the small town himself. Um, he took in aspects of what the different churches taught and started preaching to other kids in the town. Fuck. His like town. Lin. His town was called Lynn, by the way. What Lynn. A, Lynn. Lynn. How, like, how's that spelled? L Y N N. Lynn. Short for Lynette. <laughs> Lynetta. The, the county's name name's Astrid Lynette. Town. Yeah. Lynn. Lynn. It's such uh, maybe the funniest town name I've ever heard. <laughs> Welcome to Lynn. It's like a train station here in Melbourne called Dennis. <laughs> Dennis, for well, that is. That, that always is very cracks good. me up. Who the fuck is Dennis? I fucking love that. Dennis, Dennis. station. Right between uh, Keith. Keith Station <laughs> Gary I'd, I'd be calling a town Gary If I ever had the chance <laughs> Mate I reckon you'll get that chance Thank you <laughs> Yeah in honour of your podcast work You get to name this town <laughs> We won't name it after you You get to choose the name Imagine a point now Where they're creating a new town I feel like we've got all our towns Yeah You no, know It's unlikely isn't it's it It's the golden age of towns The only way it would happen Is if a new sort of resource was found yeah. In the desert somewhere, and they're <laughs> like, all so. right. The only way it'll happen is nuclear apocalypse, and we have to start again. <laughs> but you Ooh. went you went a different route. 
That that well, does. That... I mean, they make different. They make new suburbs. Like Caroline Springs was new. That's true. And then yes. maybe if it got big enough, it could just be a town. That's true. Yes, that is true. And then mm-hmm. there's sort of offshoots of those. What would you like Gary's postcode to be? Oh, Gary, it was got to be. The first letter's going to tell. The first digit's going to tell us where which state he wants it in. Oh. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Well, if I was gonna. It was gonna be sixty nine, sixty nine. Oh, but... that's good. <laughs> No, nah, that's good. Yeah, oh. we're leaving that. Yeah, 69, 69. I know the, that's our official township of podcast Gary. number. <laughs> you know, Gary. <laughs> it's all about that boning. <laughs> anyway, some kids that knew... Jeez, that was a... W- yeah, I can't no. even remember the last time I was reading. Just because he was preaching at kids and that's funny. Yeah, preaching other kids, but little bits from different religions. Is oh. that right? Right, yes. I wonder what his favourite religion is. He was also kind of... He was a bit anti-dancing and stuff like that I read somewhere. <laughs> It was Anti like dancing. Footloose sort of yeah, thing. He'd watch <laughs> Footloose. He was preaching that. Preaching from the book of, of Bacon. Anti-dancing. But anti-bacon. Anti-bacon, yeah. He saw Bacon and he was like, no, no, I'm kosher. I'm not having that. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. That's a very, that's, that's, that feels like it deserves laughter, a clever joke like that. But yeah, thank but you. But also not, it yeah. just, yeah. But it also felt like. Because it's clever, but I also rolled my eyes. Yeah. It's one of those one of twofers. Those. Mm, I see what you did there and yeah. fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's impressive, but no. something about it makes me feel like I wish you weren't talking right now. <laughs> um, some kids, <laughs> some kids that knew him at the time later suggested that he was a really weird kid. Huh. <laughs> Isn't that surprising? Yeah. They later suggested that. Yeah. It's funny how you look back on things. I reckon rewriting history. He to be started honest. a cult. He was a wit weird, actually. <laughs> a wit now weird. That, now that yeah. I think about it, he was yeah. a wit weird. <laughs> He's a wit weird. That boy. <laughs> That boy down that there. That boy down there, he was a bit weird. He was a bit weird. Um, and, yeah, they also said that he was very obsessed with religion and death. Apparently he held funerals for dead animals, dead pets, and possibly that's uh, stabbed a cat to death once. Yeah, right, and then gonna, had a funeral for it. Was going to stop you and be like, that's not. No, it's not. He stabbed the cat. Well, I mean, this is, yeah, look, I don't, you know, the... <laughs> It's uh, this is such a weird story. This guy. Yeah. Some things it's like, oh, is this guy good? And then other times you're like, oh, no, he's no good. He's a very confusing character. Mm. He's a wit weird. Obviously, you know, as as the story goes on, you realise majority bad. But he seems some t- at points you're like a bit of a, you have a bit of sympathy for him, do you, man? No. You see the good in everyone, do you? No. I think everyone's got a bit of good in them. No, not everyone. Okay. Mousy dong. Yeah. Look, I don't know a lot about the mouse, but... Uh, Jones's father was an alcoholic racist, and some have suggested he had oh. Ku Klux Klan connections. God, that was fun. Say that again. Ku Klux Klan connections. That was good. That was hard a second time around. Ku Klux Klan connections. That's fun. Dave, have a go. That's fun to say. Uh, I'm too afraid to say it out loud. <laughs> Interesting point. Yes. Okay, fair enough. Jim clashed with his father about this. Jim and Jim. At one point... They did not speak for years after his dad wouldn't allow a black friend of, of Jim's into the house. His parents split up hmm. and Jones moved to Richmond. See? Indi- also in Indiana. That's a reasonable name. With his mum. There's a Richmond everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, where he had a chance to reinvent himself. There he worked at a hospital where he met a nursing student named <laughs> Marceline Baldwin. He's reinvented himself as a doctor. <laughs> hey guys, I'm a doctor now. Okay. Wait, forget I said now. now. Well, we've, n- <laughs> yeah, we've never seen you before, so that's a bit weird. It's a bit weird. Forget the now part. Uh, always. I've always been a doctor. I've come from Lynn. Hi, I'm a doctor always. <laughs> As always, I'm still a doctor. Can I have a job? As a doctor. Hello, one one doctor pl- is here. That's me. G'day. Hello there, Dr. Me is here. All right, Dr. Me, can you fill out these forms? <laughs> yes. Dr. Me can. <laughs> so, so, sorry, pardon me, but he did meet someone with a fantastic name. What was her name? Can you... Marceline Baldwin. Mm. Marceline. Or maybe Mar- Marcy. Marcy, yeah, great. That's better. Marcy Dong. <laughs> Marcy Dong. <laughs> As her friends called her. Uh, Jones graduated early from Richmond High School in 1948 with honours. Mostly because he just said, I'm graduated now. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> oh, shit, fuck. Uh, the following year, he married Marceline B- Marcy Baldwin. While studying at Indiana University why, in Bloomington. Why are you in such a rush? You know? You know. Why can't yeah. you just date for a while? Yeah. you got so much growing up to do. Yeah, Christian people well, definitely... Was, yeah, I was going to say he's highly religious. Yeah, okay. 
1951, Jones attended Communist Party gatherings in Indianapolis. Publicly supporting communism at that time led to a pretty negative attention from the FBI. Yeah, that's a, that's a bad, a hard time for you to have those views publicly. He And he was becoming frustrated with the ostracization of open communists in the US. And this led to Jones asking himself the question, apparently, how can I demonstrate my Marxism? And his thought was, infiltrate the church. Sure, okay. Hmm. Use the church. Use the church. I'm in the church now. I mean, always. (laughs) Hello, it's me from church. I mean, is he still, does he think he's the Messiah? At this point, or is his mum just... That doesn't... I, don't, I think that it really feels like, to me, that was just this weird one-line thing about his mum. I shouldn't have mentioned it, to be honest. No. I shouldn't have thrown no. weight behind it. It's my favourite part me so too. far. Me too. You're Jones... going to really struggle to impress us beyond that. Jones got a job as a Ooh. senior... As a builder. Oh. Carpenter. <laughs> Come on. Jo- so this is, he's had the idea, he's like... He wants to do be a socialist or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's in a socialism. Mm-hmm. He, he, but communism is, is, is on the nose. So he's thinking, I'm getting in the church, right? And he got a job as a student pastor at the Somerset Southside Methodist Church. He found frustration there as the church leaders prohibited him from including black people in his mass. Oh. And in time, he left to branch out on his own. So he's not racist. So that's... That's something. Um, he had been interested in some evangelical preachers that he'd seen, especially those who performed those faith healing ceremonies, noticing that they were able to bring in a lot of people and also their money. Ah. <laughs> That's what he noticed. <laughs> also, what most of those faith healers notice and why they do it, yeah. one can speculate. I guess I guess he, he's, think, cause he's, he's thinking because he's he's thinking about the church as a way to forward his political ideologies, mm. right? So he's thinking. You know, that's classic political party. You need money to, to better your cause hey, or whatever. Matt, don't you think Dave would be a really good faith healer? Yes. Let me hear you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You've just got so much charisma. Thank I you. I believe you. You'd be like, you know, the ones that you see sometimes, they're little boy, they're little boy healers. That's yeah. who it would be. They go out oh, and say. I have seen those. Yeah. You're thinking Bart Simpson? You, well, you've got, yeah, you've got the, you've got the best of both worlds. The b- boyishness and. Charisma. Yeah. Thank you. And also, you know, you're, uh, you and can drive legally. <laughs> <laughs> you're, an, you're an adult. You also, get, you own a car. So. You, you can get from place to place. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's a big three. You're cool. a triple threat. That's I am fancy. missing what I see to be an essential part of it, which is the faith. Faith, yeah. I don't I know, don't if, know that if that's is Oh, really? Great. Sure. Great. So I don't need healing powers. How do you feel about money? I love it. How do you feel about acting in a, in a way that... You know, maybe people don't realise that you're full of shit. It's a prank. How do you feel about pranks? Oh man! Yeah, at the end of the uh, I was gonna say at the end of the episode. At the, yeah. At the end of the sermon, you've all been punked. Woo! Yeah, yeah. I get in my car and drive but away. Just don't it's do exactly that. Exactly like last that. Bit. Just ignore that last part. Oh, yeah. Right. Don't do that last bit. And then, uh, and then you'll get heaps of cash. How do you feel? I feel great. You on board? Yeah. Okay, great. From the 11th of June to the 15th of June in 1956, Jones held a big religious convention in the Cadle Tabernacle, which is a large hall in Indianapolis. That is an incredible name for a hall, and I would love to play that venue one day if it still exists. Mm-hmm. He booked a... Let's book- do a live show there. Yeah. Oh, man. Tabernacle. The Cadle Tabernacle. Live at the Cadle Tabernacle. Oh, that's The sick. Do Go On podcast. Weighing in at Wait. nine... Pounds. So you mean, because that doesn't sound like you, do you mean we'd be big enough by that stage for somebody else to announce us? Yeah, that, no, I'm putting on a character to make us look more popular. <laughs> than, we are, than we walk out to a crowd of four people and it's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> it's a big hall. It's a big hall, but I think Indianapolis is where Letterman's from, isn't it? Maybe he could be involved. I'm sure he would. I'm sure Great. he's free. That's perfect. Maybe he, Dave can introduce us. He loves podcasts, especially this one. Uh, he, cause, so he wanted to fill the hall. It's a big convention, five day convention. But he, at this stage, he's not a big name. Mm-hmm. He needs a big name act. Mm-hmm. David um, Letterman. <laughs> funny you say that. <laughs> uh, so he booked a big name preacher known as Oral Roberts. Oral <laughs> Roberts. Apparently, <laughs> you just would love that. That was his stage name. That wasn't his real name. But anyway, Oral. Oral. <laughs> his real name was Handjob <laughs> Roberts. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> he tossed up a few names. Head job. 
<laughs> nah, I don't like it. Doesn't uh, roll on its own. Oral. Oral, that rolls off. Oral is also just a strange <laughs> sound. Uh, oh, oral. Oral. Anyway, it's a great name. Um, it's not. It is. Oral. I'm on board. No, you're right. It's not. I don't know. Why Why am I trying to convince someone? Oral. No, it's a beautiful name. Ugh, this preacher from the 50s. What a yuck sound. Oral. It sounds like you're choking. It's like, oral. <laughs> and it would be. dry reading. Oral. Oral. <laughs> I'm, oral. <laughs> imagine in America it's probably pronounced oral. As well. Oral. Still gross. Let me try oral. it. Let but me that's try a different it. word. That is a different oral. word. <laughs> that's oral. You've gone from mouth to ears in, w- in one mispronunciation. <laughs> That changes everything. Oh, well. uh, the momentum he gained after uh, pulling off this big event, because he did get the crowds, meant that he could now launch his own church, which is what he did. How does one oh, so, launch a church? So, so, what? Big event. What you do, you get Oral <laughs> Roberts, you do a five-day convention, and we've just heard the, the 101 to how to start a church. But how do you, like, do you build it yourself? I think do you, you find you, a, a property? You fill, fill in a form online, I think. Okay. And then you just turn turn an empty empty, empty room into a church. church. There's church now. <laughs> it is now blessed. <laughs> oh, church now. Church Beautiful. now. Um, this is my living room. Nope, it's my church now. Church now. Sorry. Sorry. Church now. At first he called it the Wings of Deliverance. Yuck. Sounds like a horror film. Sounds oral. But eventually, it had a few name changes. Eventually, it became best known as the People's Temple, which is short for the People's Temple of the Disciples of Christ. Too long. People's Temple is fine. People's Temple. People's Temple. The church was racially integrated in a time where segregation was still common. He was becoming a more prominent community figure also. In 1960, he was appointed as director of the Human Rights Commission by uh, the Indianapolis mayor. That's a, that's a big job, right? Yeah. Human Rights Commissioner. He's a well-trusted guy. Um, despite the mayor asking him to keep a low profile, Jones went hard seeking outlets for his views on radio and television. He sort of saw it as a chance to, to get his name out there yeah. and the name of his church and, yep. and his beliefs and, and whatnot. According to the trusted source of Wikipedia, through this time, he helped get a really big dick. <laughs> See, did you see me think of that, like, midway through a word? I I'm like, I'll probably have to... That was seamless. I've done it again. <laughs> I'm actually so impressed. But do you see the thing with the joke? Is you that don't. It's, it's like it's funny, but it's not that no, it's, funny. No, it's no good. I didn't want to do it. I just felt like no, I had to. you had to. I felt like I had to. You did the right as thing. As soon as I said Wikipedia, I had to do that. Yeah. No I one don't... feels good about it. No, People I... at home are going, we don't feel good about it. Yeah. I'm... I fucking loved it. Yeah, we know, mate. <laughs> Call back to a dick joke I did earlier. <laughs> There's no higher praise. <laughs> um, but apparently, uh, according to that great source, he helped racially integrate churches, restaurants, the telephone company, the police department, a theatre, an amusement park, and the Methodist hospital. Wow. So he, he was making big change in Indianapolis. Uh, when swastikas were painted on African-American family homes, Jones walked the neighbourhood... Comforting locals as he went around. Um, he also. Okay, but that's. I mean, that's very nice. Yeah. But just take a bucket of paint, mate. <laughs> yeah. Just slap on some that's paint a, over the top. Like, hey, I'm here for you. Okay, cool. All right, mate. Just stop by. Get Bunnings. your hands dirty, mate. Like, what's the? I mean, it's uh, sure. That's nice. Go visit and say, hey, this sucks. Really sorry about that. No, it does. That's a really awful thing. But you're not being that useful. Just quick roller, some paint, done, fixed. That everyone's happy. No, I think it's it's nice. Yeah, that's right. You would think that. There was community backlash for his work in, in racial integration. His temple was graffitied, death threats were made, and even a dead cat was thrown at his house. No, he just <laughs> killed that cat. Yeah. There was that. Yeah, I, I feel like I forgot, I forgot that. I was like, wow, he's going through a great period of his life. He did kill a cat. Well, then, yeah, some, that's some say. Some, some say. say. I mean, this is all some says. I haven't. I wasn't. To be honest, I wasn't there personally to see any of this. Well, so. as we get to more of it, I think it's more than a cat that he's um. Yeah, but responsible right. for. How, like how far close do you have to get to the house before you can hit it with a cat? <laughs> we, it does seem like a weird. Yeah, it's a fun. lot. I mean, you'd have to get close, or you're a really good throw. Imagine if you threw it, and you missed. You had to go and pick it up, <laughs> throw it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, shit. you'd throw it and go. Oh fuck! And just speed off. Yeah, because that's gross. Oh, you're you're pushing them in the car. 
Yeah. I imagine they're just on foot. Oh, they've walked 3K holding a dead cat. No, no, they're in a, with a mountain bike with a basket on the front. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cat dead cat front. basket. And then what do they use it for when they don't have a dead cat in there? Oh, it's always got a dead cat in there. <laughs> they've always got someone to throw a cat at. <laughs> There's always someone. <laughs> in night. They, ni- they never use it for groceries? Never. Or dinking No, friend? no, they've got a, they've got a grocery Box on the yeah. back oh. as well. Yeah, yeah. They don't cross. When that isn't full with cats, then they <laughs> they they go. Oh, better go get some groceries and kill some more cats. I'm out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they they bring one up into the basket any time. It's sort of like them sort of reloading the gun. Yeah, <laughs> with a dead cat. Slowly riding around the streets, oh. ringing the bell. Everyone, yeah. In a really slow, menacing yeah. way. It's got Who's a no- next? <laughs> it's got a novelty bell. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the dead cat guy. Meow. <laughs> in 1961, Jim and Marcy became the first white couple in Indiana to adopt a black kid, who they named James Warren Jones Jr. So now he's James Jones the third. J W J J. There's so many names out there. Thousands. You can even make it up. You could call him Oral. That's a made up name. That's a made up name. <laughs> I'm gonna have Oral. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a listener tweet in now, being like, "My name is Oral." <laughs> Well, you sound like I'm dry reaching. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's a beautiful name. If that, sorry, I didn't, if you are listening oh, and, you, and your oh, name is Oral, oh. know that you you are loved and change your name. <laughs> <laughs> you have our support. <laughs> we are here for you. Uh, the couple adopted many other children also. Uh, Joan stated that integration is a more personal thing to me now. It's a question of my son's future. So did they only adopt the one black kid and then the others were white? No, it was a, he called it his rainbow family. Okay, that's, that's All his kids were yeah, it was very I diverse. I was worried that it was like, you know, tokenism. For a, <laughs> a very diverse brood. Jim the third, you know, just like, nah, look, we got one. No, nah, yeah, that would, that would like, be no good. No, it wasn't like that. Oh, that's right. Then this Jim Jones guy sounds all right. Uh, atonement for killing that cat one time as a kid. This was, guy's all right. Yeah, End of report. There was what, yeah, a hero. It was around in this middle part where I was, I was forgetting who what he was. Anyway, in 1961, the Joneses relocated to Brazil. Uh, they were seeking a possible new location for the church. Um, there was some fears growing of a nuclear apocalypse. Which sure. Dave mentioned earlier, I think. In 1963, the family started working um, with the poor in Rio slums. But later that year, they received word that their temple back home in Indiana was struggling without his leadership, so they returned home. Yeah, they, they were basically they were looking at a, a way out. Mm-hmm. And you think, like, knowing more stuff, you wonder, like, he was trying to escape from something, right? Trying to get away from... Well, those cats. The cats. American <laughs> yeah. law. Stop I don't know, like cats. something. Mm. Why? Yeah. Why was he so keen to leave America? He he'd say because he worried about nuclear apocalypse, which would be, I guess, the Cold War. Is that what was going on then? Yeah, big stuff with Russia and America. So, mm. I mean, so Brazil. I guess that that would be, that would make some sense. But what he does soon would go against that. On returning home, Jones told his followers that the world was about to be engulfed by the nuclear war, predicting the specific date of July fifteenth, nineteen sixty seven. I never get the. They happen all the time. People go. This exact date. We've, we've got a big cult here. You guys all believe me, so I can say this, and you'll believe it. Don't, I mean, why be so specific? Mm. Say so I've got a feeling it's coming. It's. I'm getting a sense it's going to be in spring. Not sure what year. Yeah. Soon though, but you go exact date. That date comes and goes, and everyone's yeah. like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. And then you go, "Oh, I'm getting a new message." Yeah. Sorry, we was... got past that one. Yeah, Phew. yeah, we did because that of thing. We d- yes, <laughs> I'm getting a new message, and this one includes a poo emoji. So this god is pretty up with the times <laughs> and upset. <laughs> pretty pissed off. <laughs> poo emoji. <laughs> That's good stuff, Dave. <laughs> Thanks. I thought it was quite good. Uh, What's your favourite emoji? I'm not a big emoji user. It's disappointing. Matt, do you have a favourite emoji? I like using the angel face and pretending I'm a little angel. Oh, yeah, you would. The one I like is the the just the sort of the blank face. Just mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's very you. Yeah, it's just that when something is a little bit like surprising, you can really oh. ex- you can really show that. 
that's funny because that's quite you. But then my favorite one is like a, a little smirky face too, which is quite appropriate, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is appropriate. Just like I say something a little bit smart ass and then I just send a little... Mm-hmm. And Dave's was... <laughs> a little the angel. The angel. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. All very appropriate. Yeah. Um, anyway, so he he's talking about this apocalypse, right? But he's he, moved back to America. He's moved back it. to in- yep. Indiana and he's telling him, look, we got to do something. About it. It's and coming. And the exact date. It's an exact date. Um, spoiler alert, it doesn't happen. Um, oh, thank goodness. Sorry. sorry. I was worried. Storytelling is a bit off there. I was worried for Jim Jones. You just don't know how to build suspense Damn in your it, stories. Sorry. Fuck. Um, I was like, did yeah, happen? Yeah, the way I build suspense is don't check the date. <laughs> <laughs> this didn't happen 50 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <laughs> huh? It just huh? hasn't got there yet. We're still not in 1967. Ooh. Oh my god! That's how you do it. You go. Oh, I just oh, no, I where you had the by, dates wrong. No, no, no I, be, I didn't mean by like society's calendar. Yeah, I meant by. That's actually a god. W- that's a wicked way to get out of it. Actually, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Not your human calendar. Ugh, patriarchy Ugh. does it again. Blame the patriarchy. Good out. Um, Works every time. So he was saying this this apocalypse was going to lead uh, in a positive way to a new socialist Garden of Eden on Earth. It's a Garden of Eden, honey. I wouldn't call it an apocalypse then. I'd call it... What do you call it? Probably a Garden of Eden on Earth. Mm, um, very catchy. Th- it is harder to yell that it's while hard. running through the streets. Harder to market that too. But so so to get away from the threat of the nuclear apocalypse, um, and they were in in India, Indianapolis in America. So obviously in in the line of fire. So he said to be safe, we're going to move to California, right, to a more populated area. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, they did. They went out like to north, sort of country California, but still. California. So I feel like you're moving closer to where anyone, if they wanted to bomb a US city. Yeah, we're talking nuclear. There's nuclear. a pretty big footprint on those things. Yeah, they're huge. Anyway, I found that to be a little bit inconsistent. Up until this point, Jones wasn't really open about his socialist ideals when he preached, um, but he started talking about this more in his sermons. Um, he's been quoted as saying, those who remain drugged by the opiate of religion had to be brought to enlightenment. Socialism. I think I'm hoping that he's spoke in a started way because I, I lost my <laughs> I lost my spot on the page. See, he was quite charismatic, <laughs> as all cult leaders are, so probably not. Have you seen him? Yep. Always wearing sunnies. He looked a bit like Elvis. Yeah. Really? Big big Elvis sunnies. Yeah, late all the time. late Elvis. Big fat Elvis. Oh uh, no. Uh, yeah, not yeah. slim Elvis. Not slim Elvis. Not hot Elvis. No, certainly not hot Elvis. So medium oh. Elvis. Medium, medium Elvis, Elvis yeah. yes. with, with glasses. Pre-jumpsuit, um, but post... Jailhouse Rock. Jailhouse Rock. Perfect, yeah. yes. Yeah, great. <laughs> great. Well done. Um, he would soon begin deriding traditional Christianity and calling the Bible a tool to oppress women and non-whites. Oh, okay. He likes women too. Yeah. Oh, He's okay. a socialist. I like this guy. He, be- he believes everyone's equal. Right. Is that what socialism is, Dave? In a way. Great. Do any of us know what socialism is? <laughs> In a way. Really is? Can we ever really know? Well, it's more of a, like an economic thing, but yeah. But it, everyone is treated equally, yeah. Uh, he, In theory. Yeah, because it, uh, like, that obviously links into communism and stuff, and that is, you know, can be misused. We've seen in the past, sometimes, I've read there are time. some examples of communism going awry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, True. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Look, man, I, uh, I hate to be the rude one to interrupt you there, but I would just like to say you that love it. The, uh, the 101, episode 101, does in fact have a sweet sponsor this week. Oh. And if I, if I could, I would love to tell you about that now. No. <laughs> That's a no from Matt. Jess, can I get a yes? Proceed. Thank you, because otherwise uh, the show <laughs> doesn't get paid. <laughs> now, this week is uh, very generously brought to you by WordPress, wordpress.com. Now, does your business show up when you Google it, when you look it up online? Well, if it doesn't, you should head to wordpress.com, because it makes it easier for your customers to find you. Your business needs an online home, and it needs a wordpress.com website. Am I right, Jess? You are right. When you Google me, it also comes up with Matt Stewart, weirdly, oh, as a suggestion, and Angela Bishop. So maybe I need a better website. <laughs> yeah, wordpress.com. Angela Bishop. Yeah, it's weird. That's weird. 
comes up, did you mean Matt Stewart or Angela Bishop? <laughs> That's quite a typo. Yeah. Now, if you are thinking of making a website for yourself, your business or you know, your band or whatever you, you want to make a website for, you don't need prior experience if you're using WordPress.com. You don't need a high... What about for your cult? <laughs> hey, if you want to make a website for your cult, WordPress.com. That's about getting you out there. It's all about that. You, there's hundreds of beautiful designs to choose from, and every every plan includes a custom domain name. So, mattscult.com. <gasps> there you go. Bang. I, I always thought my cult would be called Matholicism. Oh, that's good. Just solicism is good too. Just solicism is probably better, I'd say. Mm. That's really. I would love the uh, because WordPress.com they have uh, people always around to help you if you ha- have any problems. I'd love if you. Hi, I'm just setting up a website for Jess for my Jess's cults. <laughs> if I could have a bit of help, but they'd help because they're friendly over at WordPress.com. <laughs> uh, did you know that 28 percent of all websites, which is billions, run on WordPress? Wow. Create your WordPress.com website and you'll see why. And now, if you want to get started today and help the show at the same time, help yourself. Help us. You get 15% off any new plan purchase if you go to wordpress.com slash do go on. You get to create your website and find the plan that's right for you if you go to wordpress.com slash do go on for 15% off your brand new website. What was that site again, Dave? <laughs> wordpress.com slash do go on, which is the name of the show, so it all makes sense. That does make sense. All right, Matt, I'm going to let you start talking about the cult again. Is that all right? He also started talking about himself more as a God figure. You know, okay. Preaching that he was a reincarnation of Gandhi, Jesus, Buddha, Vladimir Lenin. Mum said I was a messiah, so... Is Gandhi dead yet? Yeah, he died He died ages ago, Dave. Not now. No, but when he's, when he's talking, I'm a... <laughs> it's like me saying I'm a reincarnation of George W. Bush. Hang on. I got called a Celia Pacola tribute act, and I was like, well, she's not dead. I can't really be a tribute oh, act. Oh, no, this I? tribute act that, that, you know... That's There's true. a Bon Jovi tribute act, That's I've true, seen. but I... Th- the Kiss tribute act, Kiss Troya, I believe it's called. But Kiss aren't, like, still gigging heaps, are they? They do a bit. <sighs> so, it was in the news this week that if you spend, I think it was $32,000, Gene Simmons will come and hang out with you at your house for two hours. Okay, well, that's a new Patreon goal. <laughs> that's so sad. Gandhi died <laughs> in 1948, so that was 20-odd yes, years sorry. before this. Oh, thank goodness. Otherwise, it would have been weird if this guy told a lie. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't believe what he's saying, Ugh. a former follower of the temple named Hugh Fortson Jr. See, that's a name. That's a bloody name. Now we're getting somewhere. I've got a friend at work whose name's Hugh, and I put it into sentences all the time. Like I said, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'd like to hear a second sentence. <laughs> <laughs> You piece of sh- Hugh, piece of shit. Ah, oh, very good. Very well. Very well played. Uh, so Huey was quoted as, uh, quoted Jones as saying, what, what you need to believe in is what you can see. If you see me as your friend, I'll be your friend. Oh. If you see me as your father, I'll be your father. Oh. For those of, of you that don't have a father, obviously. If you see me as your saviour, I'll be your saviour. If you see me as your God... I'll be your god. Enrique Iglesias, is that you? I can be a hero, yeah, baby. Yeah, he's doing everything. Like, if you see him as uh, as your barber, will he just whip out the scissors? Like, you what's see, going on? If you see me as the janitor, I'll mop your floor. <laughs> yeah. If you see me as uh, your chauffeur, where do you need to go? I'll get you there. And do you think there's anything he wouldn't do? Can he do anything? Yep. But he won't do that. I was confused by that line. The church grew quickly after moving to California. Uh, with new temples opening up in many different cities, including in San Francisco, uh, away from... The, they, they set up in a little country town. Um, and uh, he became more prominent politically. Uh, he was appointed by the mayor of San Francisco as the chairman of the San Franciscan Housing Authority Commission. Uh, Jones was different from most cult leaders as he was able to find public support from prominent politicians in this way. Like, people would publicly go, we're on board with this clearly cult-leading guy. Um, Vice presidential candidate Walter Mondale even publicly praised the temple. Uh, His star was continuing to rise. But with the extra public praise came increased visibility and scrutiny. In the summer of 1977... A uh, reporter, Marshall Kilduff, was set to publish an expose. This expose was to include allegations from former followers that they were emotionally, physically, and sexually abused. Oh, those are the three worst ones. Yeah. And uh, so that so this is about to come out, right? They've found out 
about this expose's imminent release, though. So Jones, along with many hundreds of his followers, decided to head to the church's compound in Guyana, South America. How good's the word expose, though? It's great. Included it twice for that reason. Didn't, <laughs> didn't need to use it both times. <laughs> Probably didn't need to use it so at all. So just to recap, they've had to move because of an expose. Yes. I it. hadn't said it yet, and I wanted to. It is a good word to say. An expose so they was just, about to come out imminently. Would what was the expose? The expose was imminent. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so they, they literally just ran away. Basically ran away rather than staying going, nah, it's bullshit. So that's always a good move, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Guilty people definitely don't do that. They, do, yeah. do that. Mm, guilty feet have got no, no rhythm. don't do that. Dude. Oh, they do have rhythm. <laughs> All the way down to South America. <laughs> char charring the whole way. Matt did a little, little dance there, didn't you? Little dance. You love a little Make a little dance. Uh, this new settlement was named Jonestown, Jonestown. by Jim Jones. Fuck. He didn't it's not a coincidence. He didn't call it Greg. I would have called it Greg Town. <laughs> Greg Town. Gary is what you were calling your town before. Oh, but yeah, this, this town. is Greg Town. Yeah, yeah Greg this is town a different thing. Named by Jim Jones. But none of our names would work to name a cult slash. What are you talking about Dave Town? That's awesome. No, it's not. But no, he's gone on to his surname. Warnicky Town. Oh. It'd be Warnicky Warnickyville. Warnickyville. That's good. Mm, Stuartopia. Oh, Stuartopia. Stuartopia. That's, that's good. That's cool. Uh, Stewton. Stewton. Oh, that's cute. Perkins Island. Ooh. You get a whole island. Wow. Oh, I do love the ocean. A small one. <laughs> to be girt by it, especially. Yes. Mm. Uh, Jonestown was a project of Jones's. He'd, he'd had it running for a little while. It was like an agricultural sort of spot that he had uh, out there for a few years. And he's been quoted as saying uh, around this time, I believe we're the purest communists there are. <laughs> okay. And he sold this settlement to his followers as a socialist paradise, though he did not allow members to leave. <laughs> like right. my, like a lot of paradises. Yeah. Para it's paradise. Well, why would you want to leave? Yeah. It's paradise. Uh, Jonestown is where Jones started talking about the translation, which was an idea that he had where he and his followers would all die together before moving to another planet to live in bliss. Right. Oh, how, how do you... Move after death. It's a tricky one. They should have moved first. Yeah, all that dead weight is a lot harder to do. You probably don't move. actually even need to die then, do you? Just move. Yeah, mate. I'd and be a great cult leader. You already have moved to Guyana. Fornickyville. So Fornickyville. Hmm. Probably skip the death part, I reckon. Yeah, each to their own. Okay. <laughs> Some ex-followers with family in Jonestown banded together to form the Concerned Relatives Group. They travelled to Washington, D.C., capital of, of America. Dave? Oh. Yeah. To deal... Oh, Dave's been, Dave's been learning all the states and capitals, haven't you, Dave? Not the capitals yet, just the states. Just the states. So whenever we mention where somewhere it is, oh, that's great. imagine it. I watched him play this... He has an app on his phone, and when we were flying back from Sydney, I watched him test himself <laughs> with all the states. It was very cute. What do you test on based on where they are in the country or their... Where they are, yeah. All right, what's the... Top one, top top left hand corner. Washington. You just lost. I. That's you just lost to someone who isn't even playing the game. Literally the only one I know. What's the next door? I've got no idea. Washington. Portland, Not Oregon. Anymore. No, that's below. Fuck. I'm but that's close. That's something. Close, yeah. It's Idaho. Idaho, the Spuds Club. I used to wear a t-shirt that was, it had a, a cartoon of a potato lying on a banana lounge with those... Those glasses that Kanye West used to wear with the yeah. plastic slats across them, yeah. just kicking back, and cool. it, and, it, and it said Idaho Spuds Club. I have no idea what it meant, but it was one of my favourite shirts. <laughs> what colour was it? It was white. Oh yeah. Uh, the singer from Body Jar signed the back at a festival one time. That's cool. It's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> did you ask him to, or did he just do it? He just did it. <laughs> It was a wild time back then. We you were living on back, a commune. You look back, and the singer from Body Jar is just marking people with a sharpie. <laughs> hey. Stop that. <laughs> this is my favourite shirt. It's my wedding dress. Why are you riding on me? <laughs> yeah. Why are you here? Why are you at my wedding? <laughs> anyway, so they travelled... The, the concerned relatives travelled to Washington, D.C. to list uh, their concerns. I bet, so the people that are worried about their relatives in the cult yes. in Guyana. Mm -hmm. They're sort of trying to get 
um, Congress to take notice and go, you know, there's a big bunch of American citizens who we're really worried about. Can you help us out, right? And it, and they got the attention of a Californian congressman named Leo Ryan who took their concerns on and he wrote a letter to the Guyanese Prime Minister, Forbes Burnham. Another great name. Fuck yeah. Um, Burnham. So you sort of wrote that on, on behalf of the, the relatives. In late... 1978, skipped a, a little bit further ahead, um, Ryan is flying now to Jonestown on a fact-finding mission uh, with the intention of investigating the allegations of abuse b- uh, f- by Jones and others. He travelled uh, with people including relatives of followers, journalists and an NBC camera crew. Mm-hmm. So you familiar, you've, this is when like we're getting closer to the action, I guess. Yep. The journey took many days including a two-day stopover in the Guyanese capital of Georgetown. Once arriving at the settlement, Jim hosted the group. Apparently, they got a limo ride to the to the, uh, to Jonestown. Mm. Can't help but notice that Georgetown is very similar to Gregtown or Garytown. <laughs> I did not even notice that. Yeah, Georgetown's quite a... Why are we just... We're giving that away. We seemed like we're okay with Georgetown. In my head, you're not, obviously. You brought it up. But yeah, Georgetown. There's, there's a Georgetown in America as well, I think. Who are the Georgetown Hoyers? I used to wear a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and the singer from Body Jar. There's so many T-shirts and so many interactions with the singer from Body Jar. <laughs> He's stalking you. <laughs> Gen- genuinely had a Georgetown Hoyers shirt. I don't, I don't know what it means, but there was a bulldog on it. Where do you get these shirts if you don't understand what they are? Yeah, what's going on? I, d- I don't know. I can't remember. Hmm. They just appear. That's weird. Did you get it from Georgetown and Guyana? They're probably, you know, op shops or... Um, Thrift shops. Thrift shops, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Macklemore. <laughs> so once, so they got the limo to the pavilion and then Jim Jones uh, hosted the group in a, in a some, you know, uh, at the... They got a, so they got a limo? At the pavilion. Yeah, they got a limo. I don't know if that was... Like from the airport. I guess, like that, I mean, it is treatment. a congressman as well. So maybe yeah. Yeah, that's okay. just how those guys travel, right? And, and he's trying to look like he's not batshit crazy. So he's like, yeah, come on in. No problem. Be a guest. It's fun. Woo. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So anyway, they're, he's, they're hosting him there in the pavilion. Um, when all of a sudden, uh, temple member Don Sly tries to attack the congressman with a knife. Oh. Don. He's thwarted. Not so sly. Who thwarts him? Uh, he's thwarted by the, by the posse. Great. So is he traveling with like some... He's traveling with uh, with F- FBI types. There'd be security. No more questions. Um. So the idea, the congressman's going. I'm leaving. Anyone want to come with me? Right? Because they're they're rushing off. He's just had a stabbing attack. He's like, who's coming with? Right. So to the to the cult members. The cult yeah. members. You don't know why I want to be here. Let's get out of here. And uh, fifteen of them came with. Um. And Jones didn't stop them. They Fifteen were, out of a lot, though. A lot, yeah, hundreds and hundreds. So and he didn't. He, he didn't. I suppose he couldn't stop them. He couldn't stop in front him. of the congressman. Exactly. That's right. Although, uh, when the group were boarding the planes, there was a couple of planes they were flying home on. Jones's armed guards arrived on a tractor and started shooting at them. Oh my God. Um, one of the temple members, one of the fifteen who came with them, also pulled out a gun and started shooting. Back at the tractor or no. at the people no, on the, the plane? at the others on the plane. So he's yeah, he sort of pretended that he wanted to go agent. back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, five people were killed, including the congressman. Um, the temple member who was trying to leave, Patricia Parks. NBC journalist Don Harris. NBC camera operator Bob Brown. And newspaper photographer Greg Robinson. Many of the group survived and were able to fly home, including Ryan staff member Jackie Spire. Right, so the plane just kept going. Yeah, they got out of there. It's a fucking full-on scenario. Mm. Um, but Jackie Spire uh, went on to become a congresswoman. So, uh, later on in the very same day, back at Jonestown, Jim Jones launched what he dubbed his revolutionary suicide campaign. Right, because you know that once you've killed a congressman, yeah. the government aren't going to leave you alone. That's right. <laughs> They're you've, coming for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, an audio recording was taken. It, it lasts about 45 minutes. And on the tape, Jones tells his followers that they need to commit suicide as hostile forces would, quote, parachute in here on us, shoot some of our innocent babies, and they'll torture our children. They'll torture some of our people here. They'll torture our seniors. That's why we should all kill ourselves. 
Wow. Yep. Uh, one of his followers is heard to say on the tape, the ones that they take captured, they're going to just let them grow up and be dummies. So that like they're so like in their mindset, this guy's mindset is we're better to all kill ourselves than let any of us, you know, go back and, and be back in society where I guess they all see him as us as all dummies. You but know? he also um, told them a lot about the state of America, like while they've been gone. And he lied to them a lot too. So it's sort of like to incentivize them not to leave. Like this is a much better place for you to be. Because one of the guys who got out, uh, he um, left his son there because Jim Jones had told him his son was half black. His, um, this guy was white. His partner was black. She, I think, had died. He was a single dad. And so he, he and his son had gone to Jonestown. But Jim Jones was telling him that like, America right now is not a not a place. It's not a safe place for your son because of the color his color. Right. So it's it's better that he doesn't that he stays here. Mm. So this guy left thinking he could come back and get his son when things were better, and he was leaving his son in a good and safe environment. Oh man. Yeah. Fuck. It's like a small North Korea, isn't it? Yeah. A little society, and they lie about the outside world to make you think you're having a great time. <laughs> This is great. This place is awesome. What yeah. do you mean? Yeah, it's really strange. Sorry. <laughs> it's very heavy. No, look, I mean, that's that's the topic that these guys buddy want. <laughs> they want to make us real sad. Um, when followers were becoming upset at the idea of killing themselves, uh, Jones responded by saying, Stop these hysterics. This is not the way for people who are socialists or communists to die. No way for us to die. We must die with some dignity. He went on to say that death is just stepping over into another plane. And the tape ends with Joan saying, We didn't commit suicide. We committed an act of revolutionary suicide protesting the conditions of an inhumane world. Yeah, so he's a... He's a loony chief. He's already operating on another plane, I think. Mm. Um, a lethal cocktail of cyanide, Valium and grape-flavoured flavor aid were handed out to the members. Those who refused to drink were forced to at gunpoint. They made their children drink first. Ugh. Yep. More than 900 people died, around a third of them children. You know the Auntie Donna sketch about Cordial, based on Jonestown? I don't think I know that one. Oh, it's, don't you remember when we would be recording and all you could hear from downstairs was Cordial over and over? It's real fun. Anyway. Because that's what, yeah, it's, it's basically cordial is what the like drink Kool-Aid, is. Kool-Aid, yeah. Kool-Aid. Yeah, it's like, it's, you that's mix where it the, with water. That's where the phrase, don't drink the Kool-Aid yeah. came from. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Which means, open your eyes, sheeple, yeah. basically. Yeah, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Is that what that means? Don't just follow a cult. <laughs> uh, Jones himself didn't go out that way. Uh, he was found with a gunshot wound to the head. Most probably self-inflicted, although um, others have said that he, he would have got someone else to do it. Uh, and he was found surrounded by the bodies of his closest confidants, including his wife and some others. Ugh. Previously, the congregation had simulated mass suicide in events named White Nights. On at least one of these occasions, members drank what Jones had falsely told them was poison. All right. They had like a drill. Yeah, with them not knowing it was a drill. What the fuck? Yeah. So they're like, all right, well, we're going to die now. Yeah, they would have gone through all the same stuff. And just been waiting. And so this time, were they sure that it was real? I guess uh, they would have been once they started seeing people dying, Good but point. maybe not right at the start. Oh, that's awful. Right. You'd probably be like, it's just another drill. It's yeah, like every you time might, the alarm goes off that. at work. Yeah. I'm like, no, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> oh, that's smoke. Nah, that's probably just that's a drill. Fine. Oh. Uh, an autopsy of Jones's body showed high levels of the barbiturate pentobarbital. Pentrobarbital. And what is that, Matthew? Uh, it's a barbiturate. Oh. A level that suggested he might have been a habitual user. Oh, right. So he was a bit drug fucked. Do you know anything about barbiturates? I, I, didn't, I, know I didn't really know what they were, so I, d- I looked them up. They can give recreational users a relaxed contentment and euphoric feeling. Um, but if, if you use it chronically, um, they're also associated with significant morbidity which is a word I didn't know, potentially increasing the likelihood of, of suicide. Oh, wow. So, which is... Oh. Holy shit. Uh, on that... I mean, I don't think he was all, all that balanced before that, you know? 
Um, Jones's wife, Marceline, obviously I said she, she passed and, and so did lots of their children. They had many. Mm. Um, three of his sons though, Stephen, Jim Jr. and Tim Jones did not p- take part in the mass suicide. Were they in Guyana? They were, yes. Oh, wow. I know it's, um, some people take issue with using the term mass suicide because realistically it was mass murder, right? Right, okay, sure. So, so, I mean, even mm. though they're effectively drinking it themselves, yep. they're not... They were forced to at gunpoint Forced as well. to at gunpoint and sort of, mind, you know, yep. backed into it. So, I don't mean it, uh, offence when I say mass suicide. Yeah, it's no obviously a, a mass murder. Yeah. Um, but the, the, his, those three sons didn't take part as they were playing for the People's Temple basketball team against the Guyanese <laughs> national team. What? Holy shit. His his cult played against the national guy on Yeah, they were like it's like he's they were their own country almost. Wow. Um So thre- they came came back still in their basketball shorts. Uh just ready for a refreshing glass of Kool Aid to Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do. Three days before the tragedy, Stephen Jones was ordered by his father to return the team to Jonestown for Ryan's visit, but he refused. He's like Dad. Basketball is life. Yeah, I don't know. Either he's like, they, they were just young adults. So they're all about 19. Yeah. So they're, they're like starting to be like, nah. Mm. Or they're just like, we're, pr- we're, we're playing basketball, Dad. We don't want to meet your boring politician. I don't I know. I feel like it might have been a bit of the first from yeah. memory, but I could be wrong. Yeah, that's what it feels like, but right? I feel like they there was were, some resistance. There was definitely, yeah. And I imagine that him pulling the trigger on the whole thing might have, you know, if he, if he was losing some of the... Yeah. People like fifteen of them were just left when they had the opportunity, and those were just the the ones who had the courage to say they wanted to leave. Yes, because they would have known that they were running a risk there anyway. Yep, totally. Mm. Stephen Jones was accused of being involved in the Georgetown deaths and put in a Guyanese prison for about three months before being released. Jim Junior was under police surveillance uh, when he got home to America, where he lived with his sister, um, who had previously defected. Um, wow. That's basically bringing the end. Jim Jr. Had, uh, has a son who's a gun high school basketballer <laughs> um, who went on to play for the University of San Diego and St. Mary's College of California, which I think is a relatively famous cool. basketball college. So that's that's me attempting to finish on, on a happier note. Oh, good. But yeah, it's, it's obviously, it's, it's a fucking, I don't know what you do with all that. Yeah, it's heavy and it's really weird, but it's very fascinating. So are we? When are we starting our cult? Can we talk about that on the pod yet, or is that still uh, top secret? Kind of want to make it like a. Make sure we get the t-shirts and everything done first. Yeah. Okay. No. Don't Gotta worry about it. Gotta get all that sweet merch ready. We'll leave it for now. <laughs> Everyone has to wear matching shirts. <laughs> yeah, that's important. Yeah. And then we'll move to Warnickeville. <laughs> Warnickeville. Von- me. Warnickeville. Oh wow! Well, great report, Matt. Even that was. A cool report about a crazy story. Yeah. You okay? And, well, I uh, I think we never said... I reckon there'll be people everywhere just like um, hugging their families. I was going to say, do you need a hug? Yeah. Dave w- will give you one. Thanks, I will give Dave. you a hug. But after I ask you, that was a golden hat suggestion. I don't think we ever named who suggested we it. We did. You just don't listen. Does the name... Stephen Sumo or Sumo mean anything to you? I did not hear that earlier, but I would like to personally thank Stephen Sumo for supporting the Golden Hat. He's through from Patreon. he's from Miami, Florida. You know, you know Miami, Florida. You might know it. I know from, Miami Flow Rider. I was going to say you might know it from its um, from its unofficial anthem. Haha. <laughs> 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 Are you having fun yet, Dave? Yep. <laughs> I'm having a great time. Yep. It's a Miami theme song. Thanks, Stephen Sumo. Surely the Miami theme song is I'm in Miami, bitch. Or CSI Miami. Yeah! Bam, bam. That does make more sense. Who are you? Who, 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 Your national anthem or your state anthem is Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> 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 and then I really want to know, and they never answer the question. I'm gonna. I've got a lot of editing work to try to pull this no. together. <laughs> well, we pause for five minutes so you can play <laughs> <laughs> badly through a microphone <laughs> a song about Miami. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah, you stuff. do. <laughs> do you enjoy giving yourself uh, 
editing work? I'm not. I'm not editing any of that out. That'll all stay. Can we please thank some Patreon supporters now? Definitely can. Whenever Dave. you're ready. Well, of course, we'd like to thank Steve uh, Sumo for suggesting that through the golden hat. And I'd like to thank everyone who supports us through patreon.com slash do go on pod. And Matt, you put it very well last week in your little outro that it makes it financially possible for us to do this show every single week and do the reports. So thank you to everyone who does that at patreon.com slash do go on pod. And now a specific shout out to the man, the myth, the magic, the, le- the legend. We've been, there's been a few juniors on this episode. Mm. We're the best junior of all. Has to be all the way from Texas, Martin Hernandez Jr. Hernandez. That's a great name. Martin, thank you. Thank you so much. That is my dad's name. And I wish I was a Martin Warnke Jr. so I could really relate to you on that level. We wish to. Dave, uh, no, then it would be Matt, Jess, and Marty. That'd be great. Matt, Jess, and Jr. Yeah. Oh, now that's a radio show. The Junior Burger. <laughs> is that my nickname, Burger? Oh, that's cute. Ber- Bergs. 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 All right, Martin Hernandez Jr., have you been looking for a new nickname? It's Bergs. Bergs. There you go. Bergs. On your, on your Bergs. Now, uh, on the other side of the planet, I would like to thank from Newbury, Berkshire in the UK, another absolute, it's just a hot name, this one. Excuse me? Hot name. <laughs> There's been some shocking names on this episode, some boring ones. This yep. one's great. Okay. It is Oliver Atwood. Ooh. Oliver, Oliver. Atwood. Oli, Oli, Oli at. Very nice English name. Ollie Atwood. Where Ollie my Ollie Wood. at? Where my Ollie at? You got, you're going to have to give everyone a nickname now. So we've got Berger, Martin Berger Hernandez Jr. What about um, Oliver Atwood, Margaret? Margaret Atwood. <laughs> Marg. There you go. Marg. Margie Atwood from Newbury, Berkshire. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Marg. Wow. Marg. Oliver. Jeez, you must feel good. For, you went from saying yeah, Oliver had a hot name to... You've to given... Margaret is your middle... Is your now your nickname. You can't have if you already have a cool name. You can't have a cool nickname. Mug. I have a very cool name and a cool nickname. Uh, no, you. Bob's <gasps> cooler than Jess. Let's be honest. Bob's cool. <gasps> I am a rich, how dare you? We how all have, dare? We all have very plain names, don't we? Yeah, we do. We Matthew, really do. David, and Jessica. Very white names. Mm. <laughs> anyway, um, I can I thank some people too. Please do. I would really like to thank from Dundee. Oh, okay. I've already got a nickname. Uh. Robbie Proctor. Great Thank you, Robbie. Man. That's a good name too. Robbie Proctor? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great name. Would he be from Scotland? Robbie Proctor. Oh, that's cool. But no. <laughs> what's, what's your nickname? Mick. Because Mick, Mick, Mick Dundee. Dundee. Dundee, that's good. What would, what would you be thinking for Robbie Proctor? Burger, Marg and Mick. <laughs> what about... Um, uh, Cro- Goody. Croc. Okay. Yeah, oh, so Goody Proctor's good. Yeah, Goody. Goody's really good. That's great. Goody Proctor. Goody Proctor. If you've heard the Crucible episode, you'll understand that. Yeah. Robbie Proctor does sound like a rock star name to me. Yeah, but a rock star from the 80s. Yeah, 80s, totally. <laughs> 80s rock star. On star. Your... Thanks so much, Robbie Proctor. Robbie Proctor. He still wears leather pants. And I <laughs> definitely want to say thank you as well to one that I'm I'm definitely going to mispronounce and I'm very, very sorry. Maybe we, maybe we can have a go and see if one of us will get it right. Um, but from uh, Lincoln Park, the place, not the band. Right. I would like to thank Philip... Bourgeois? Oh, that's good. That's going to be right. Bourgeois. <laughs> I lied. I nailed it. That was great. Bourgeois. Philip Bourgeois. Philly B. So what would, uh, what would Philip's nickname be? Philly B. Cheese. Cheese steak. Philly cheese. Interesting. The big cheese. What about Z? Why? Like the bourgeois Z. <laughs> that's good. That's not bad. The big Z. The big Z. Oh, the big Z. Big Z. All right, we can take your choice. Take Ch- your pick there, I think, Ch- Phil. What about top? ZZ top. Oh, yeah. That's because I love when you get no, so no, far away from oh, it. Okay. I love that. You have to start explaining. What, why are you called that? I have to explain Bop a bit. That would be ha- what to be like. Well, um, Richie Valens was on a plane with the big bopper, yeah. whose real name. Oh, well, that would be complicated. Yeah, it is. Anyway. Matt, you got some people to thank? Yes. All I'd right. love to thank uh, Christine Mulder. Mulder. Oh, I gotta call her Fox for sure. Fox, yeah, the Fox. She's from Orchenflower in Queensland, which I haven't heard of. Orchenflower. Oh, nice. Looks but like a looks like a German name. Thanks, Fox. On your Fox. Fox. Yeah, it's gotta be Fox, or you could be like the X, X Man, X Fox. I reckon Fox. Fox. <laughs> Going through your brain. Now we're gonna stick with Fox. Thank you, Fox. 
Could be cheese as well. Moulder. Uh, a mouldy cheese. I'll find a way to make everyone cheese. And also, I'd love to thank, from Oxford, Nottingham, Clara Sabolitsky. Oh, that's not going to be right. No, I reckon that's not bad. Clara's a cute name, though. Clara yeah. Sablitsky. Clara Sablitsky. There you go. Um, Saab. Saab Sabre. Sabretooth. Sabretooth oh, Tiger the cool. Tiger. Oh, I was going for Cupcake. Cupcake. Clara Cupcakes. Yeah, which is a character. Cupcake's good. They're, they're different spectrums. Cupcakes and Sabretooth Tigers. Yeah, interesting. You and I. I don't always know what, opposing, aren't we? I don't know what spectrum they're on. <laughs> they're at opposing ends. Dave, anything for Clara? I like Sabre. Okay. Sabre it is. Sabre. Well, let's go around and thank them one more time using their nicknames that we've created. I'd like to thank... From Texas, Bergs. Mm-hmm. From Newbury, Berkshire, Marg. Just <laughs> oh. who you got? I've got uh, Mick yep. or Croc. Or oh, Croc. Or Goody. 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 Goody from Dundee. And was Cheese? Or Z? Was... No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had a few for Philip. Bourgeois. What about Bourgeois Cheese? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's Bourgeois, fun. Cheese. Bourgeois Cheese. From Lincoln Park. And uh, Matt? And we had from... Ockenflower, that's not going to be right. The Fox, and also from Oxford, uh, Sabre. <laughs> I'm thinking Atwood, Marg is no good. You can't give him Marg. Atwood, wasn't going? Atwood the surname of um, the brooding Ryan from the OC? You what? call him Chino, because that was Ryan Atwood's name. I might be wrong on his surname. <laughs> and if one? so, that's even better. Yeah, Chinos. that's good. Chino. Chino. Chino, okay, fine. fine. Take your pick there, Oliver. Would you like to be Marg? My preference, or Chino. <laughs> Both ordinary, to be honest. <laughs> really sorry, Oliver. You uh, you deserve more. Please tweet Dave. Tweet Dave, and he'll come up with something better later. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll have a think for you, Oliver Atwood. But thank you to everyone who does support the show through Patreon. We'd love to give a nickname to all of you, and the way you can make us do that is to head over to patreoncom go on pod. We just released our episode for September. And if you sign up now, you can uh, listen to that bonus episode. It is... Well, I actually won't say the topic. You can... Uh, no. Okay, I'm gonna, we'll level with you. We're about to record that bonus episode, <laughs> and I know what it is. And it's a really cool topic, but Jess and Matt don't know, so I don't want to spoil it for them. But uh, head over to our Twitter page don't or Patreon, it. and you'll see what the topic is. No spoilers. Sorry, I don't want to spoil don't. it. Don't. Dave. Right, I'll give you a clue. Don't. 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 It's really cool. Don't. Oh, now I oh. know what it is. Sorry. There's Cornetto a, ice cream. only one cool thing there's in the hat. I'd love to one more time. Thanks, Stephen Sumo, for his... I'm, I'm just having a, a few different cracks at how he pronounce his name. Sumo. 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 Stevie Sumo. Well, well, all right, let's give him a nickname before we sign off. Oh, yeah. The Wrestler. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that works. That's good. Nappy. What about Rock? Because Mickey Rock played the yeah. wrestler. Rock. Rock and roll. Rock, rock and roll. <laughs> That's how summer rolls. Rock and roll. <laughs> uh, guys, if you want to get in contact and suggest a uh, topic, we uh, the hat is full of suggestions, but there's always room for more in uh, Jack the Hat McVitie, as we like to call the hat. And uh, you can get in contact at DoGoOnPod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and DoGoOnPod at gmail.com. The... Uh, the Hotline is always open. Sometimes we, I get a few messages, especially because uh, I look after the Facebook messages, and uh, people say, how do I submit a, submit a topic? You're already... You're doing right, it. You're in the right place. Yeah, I look after the emails, and people say, is this right? I'm sorry if this is wrong. No, you're doing it. Great job. Keep it up. Woo, go you. Woo, you're the best. You're all the best for listening, and we'll be back with a new episode next week. Yes. Mm. Possibly with a special guest. Possibly with... Mm. Who's next otherwise? Jesse hey. P. That's is that the first time you've ever called me Jesse P? Maybe. Don't like that. Oh, Boppy P. I've been no, a lot of people call me Jesse P. Just weird from you for some reason. Oh, sorry about that. No, that's okay. What if I call you Jesse P? All right, fair enough. (laughs) Matt will never make that mistake again. (laughs) So it might be just reporting or it might be a super secret guest. We'll find out, but until then I will say thank you for listening and goodbye. Bye Bye. later as fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Hundred and one. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you. To you. To you.
dear, 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 dear.